Hi, biology. I hope you had a great weekend. And um, if your weekend was anything like mine, I'm sure it involved a lot of sitting around the house and maybe doing schoolwork or um, chores, whatever your parents have asked you to do. And I hope you are not um, getting too restless. And just wanted to let you know from the get go that I am um, missing you guys and I look forward to when we can um, meet in person again. But by now, I hope you have turned in your open book, open note assessment on the second half of chapter 10. That's due today, this morning. Okay. Today, I'm going to start talking about chapter 11, which is titled Classifying Life. So there is the page in your textbook, Classifying Life. Okay. This is going to be really short. We're not spending a lot of time on this because um, I want to get through this so then we can actually talk about the specific classifications and we can spend the rest of the year basically discussing different um, parts of God's creation. So as we discuss this classification chapter, we're not going to get into a lot of details about the individual um, kingdoms or um, just uh nitty gritty into details about certain organisms because we're going to wait for that and pick back on that once we get through just the basics of classification. So you may have a lot of questions, especially when we talk about um, bacteria and, you know, I know the whole reason we're not together is because of a virus and there's actually a distinction with viruses. They're a little weird. So we'll talk about that. We are definitely going to talk about, I was actually considering before all of this happened, skipping the next chapter, which is on bacteria and viruses, but we will definitely be talking about that. But just hold on for about another week and we'll get there. So when we talk about classification, we go back to um, what we've actually already been talking about a little bit. So that's good. It's not anything brand new. Remember, we, you read an entire article before um, the assessment last week about kinds and how God grouped organisms into kinds and God is wise. God um, knows his creation well, and he knows that he made things that look like other things. So he made horses and zebras. They look alike. And we know maybe that when they got off the ark, it was actually the same kind. And then as they scattered and um, moved to different areas on the globe, they needed to adapt to their environments. And so now we have something that looks like a zebra with stripes, and we have horses that um, we have in this country that are not striped. And that is all part of um, the idea of classification. So let's just jump right into it. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint notes from chapter 11, and we're going to kind of just go through them like we hopefully as close to what we would do in class as possible. So chapter 11, classifying life. And this all goes into the idea of naming things, naming organisms. So why and how do scientists classify living things? Well, it's all about organization. It's so that when you call someone on the phone or you talk to someone um, online or when you're comparing literature and research, you're all using the same name. It, it just limits confusion. Um, that's basically why. So, but it helps us to understand God's creation better. It helps us to understand what things, what organisms are, have more in common than others. That's all the idea of um, kinds dating, going back to the ark. And we're told in Genesis that God told Adam to do it. God told Adam to name the animals. And then that's how Adam came to the realization that he, there was no one else like him and that he needed a helper. Remember the story? So God even had Adam do um classification. So what do we call that today? That is called taxonomy. So the science of classifying organisms today is called taxonomy. So know that term. All right. Now there is a hierarchy of organisms. What does the hierarchy mean? Do you remember? It's like a ranking, a ranking system. So we do this um, 
kind of, it, it, you know, it, it gets a little tricky. Do we do it by genetic information or do we do it because certain organisms look alike? That's what we mean by phenotype. How do we do it? Well, the true answer is it's a little bit of both or maybe a whole lot of both. Um, but there are eight classification groups. All right. So we start out with the broadest. And this is ranked, the way I've tried to show this here is that the domain, the domain is the broadest, meaning um, there's only three. There are only three domains. All right, we'll come back to that in just a second. But just know that one domain is archaea, one domain is bacteria, and the other is eukarya. So archaea and bacteria have a lot of things in common, but enough of a difference that they decided several years ago to split them apart because we used to just have two domains, but now we have three. All right. So domain and then kingdom. So that's like your animal, your plant, et cetera. Then phylum, then class, then order, then family, then genus, then species. Now go back to that article from last week when we talked about kinds. Do you remember one of the questions was, which modern classification, sorry about that, which modern classification did, did, would kinds be pulled from? And the general idea, the general consensus there is that it would be either from the order or family. And so that's about midway through our broad classification groups. Okay. Now, you're going to have to know that. You're going to have to know the order. You're going to have to know which one's the broadest domain, which one is the most specific species. There are different ways to remember it. And when I was in school, we really didn't talk about domain. We really kind of started with kingdom. And so I was taught to remember it as King Philip cried out for goodness sake. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then S sake species. All right. Now, since we've added this broader, the broadest of categories domain, I just put a deer in front of it. So dear King Philip cried out for goodness sake. So domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, eight classification groups domain being the broadest, species the most specific. So that's another way to remember that. It's the same root, specific species. Now, your book has actually a very lovely chart that kind of pulls in the idea of the um, taxa, the classification groups, as well as the different kingdoms. All right. So the two broadest categories are domain and kingdoms, all right? So the three domains, you need to know these, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. So if you look on page 209 in your textbook, you will see this broken down here, all right? Do you see this table? And it's labeled archaea bacteria, and eukarya, all right? Now, eukarya, it, that's eukaryotes, that's like us, all right? That's what that means. All right, then within those domains, we, have, we go down to kingdoms, all right? And same thing, um, you'll see this laid out beautifully in both pages 208 and 209 in your textbook on that very nice, lovely chart that goes through. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So let me come out of here for just a second. And then I'll show you, hopefully give you a good view of this. And that way it will eliminate some confusion. So here, here is, I know it's not clear on the camera, but this is in your textbook. Again, this is on page 208. So it looks a little bit like this with flowers and a dragon tree and a reef octopus and a tanager bird and a sugar glider. Okay. So they, you should look at this just to give you an idea. You don't have to memorize it except for the way the classification works. So domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So you do need to know that, but you don't have to memorize the actual chart itself. 
Um, all right, let me go back to showing you my slides again. Hang on just a second. Sorry. All right, now, the seven kingdoms, archaea, bacteria, chromista, protozoa, fungi, planty, and animalia. You need to know those. Those kingdoms you need to know. Okay. Any questions about that? You need to know those. Again, we'll get into the more specifics of each of those kingdoms. We will. But just make sure you know those seven. All right. Now, as we decide that it's time to talk about you know, the idea going from kinds into the scientific realm of species. Okay, let's look at the scientific definition, the scientific idea of species. is a group of organisms that look the same and have the same structure. They can also produce fertile offspring. But as we have learned, there are exceptions to every definition. And if you go back to that kinds article, we saw that certain organisms, if they're placed in the same environment, even though they're now considered separate species, actually do reproduce and produce organisms, some of which are fertile. All right, now that means you can produce other babies. All right. So um, every, every definition has exceptions and there are limits. Um, there are limits to the exact definition of that. All right, now, um, we've already talked about this guy. We thought that he was a Christian based on his writings. Um, but Linnaeus is the first person to invent something called binomial nomenclature. So that means two names. So organisms are named, and they're given two names, much like your first name and your last name. It's kind of the same idea. So the modern way to do this is by taking the genus name, remember? Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So to get the actual scientific name, using binomial nomenclature, we take the genus name of the organism and the species name. And the roots are in Latin. These are Latin terms. So if you um, were going to write an organism's name, you would use that. Um, you would use italics, and the genus name would be capitalized, and the species name is lowercase. So, for Homo sapien, Homo, excuse me, Homo sapien, that's humans. Homo is the genus name. Sapien is the species name. Both names are italicized. The genus name is capitalized. On page 212 in your textbook, I'm gonna come back out of my slides again. On page 212 in your textbook, you'll see this grouping of horses here. Well, they're not horses, okay? But they all look a lot like horses, but right here, you'll see there's a type of zebra. It's called a mountain zebra. But you'll notice that they all have the same genus name. Equus, E-Q-U-U-S. But then within that genus, there are several species, and this is just a sampling of them. Okay. So just a nice picture to help you kind of get an idea of the fact that the genus is still quite broad, and then you get more specific when you add that species name to the end. All right. Now, um, they are still the, the, there's still the idea of kinds and varieties. And um, while, you know, it's very interesting, all of these kind of look like the same thing, right? That equus genus, they all look so similar. Um, dogs, your dog, my dog, they are all the same species, even though my little white furball probably looks quite different than someone's Great Dane. Definitely looks, not probably, definitely looks quite different. But those are still the same species. So just there, you, you can kind of see it's hard to know. Do you go with phenotype? Do you go with genotype when you're classifying these organisms? And the actual answer is mm, 
probably a little bit of both because no one would, again, no one's going to confuse Daphne with a Great Dane and yet they are the same species. So I don't know if that helps or if now you're more confused between the classifications and the idea of kinds, but um, I think the fact that there is still a lot of debate and confusion goes back to the idea of, um, you know, sometimes we just, we scientists are doing the best they can and the, mud, the waters do get muddied from time to time when we deal with classification. Now, with that said, on page 212, there are eight questions and I'm actually gonna want you to do them all, one through eight. This should not take you long, by long, I mean, maybe 25 minutes. You don't have to answer in complete sentences, but I do want you to use the Google Doc that's posted with this assignment. Type your answers in there. That's just the easiest way for me to read them. Um, sometimes the photographs are a little harder to read. Okay. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to end this for today and I will check back in with you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.